Hi everyone, welcome to this video. This time we are going to see how to create a half and bridge and driver to be used in LTS Spice simulations. This uh, driver is going to have one PWM input, two isolated outputs with dead time. The dead time is going to be programmable, so we are going to have a parameter to control the value of the dead time and then uh, also is going to have a shutdown input. We will see how to implement this driver and then we will see an example of application. This slide shows what we intend to do. We want to create this driver to drive a half bridge inverter. Here we have both transistor, transistor A and transistor B. And then we have this PWM input in which when this input is equal to 1, this means that we want to activate the top transistor, transistor A. And when the uh, PWM input is equal to 0, then this means that we want to activate transistor B, transistor MB. So we need to generate these two outputs, A and B, in which we are going to have, uh, in, in the output A, we are going to have a value high level um, voltage when we want to activate transistor A, and this corresponds with the PWM input equal to 1. And for the output B, then we have to generate a signal in which it is going to have a, a high voltage level when the input PWM input is equal to 0. Okay, so we have here the waveforms that we want to generate. But we also want another thing, and we want to have some dead time between the activation of transistor A and the activation of transistor B. So we have here these intervals here at this point and also here at this instant here in which before activating transistor B we leave a small dead time after the turning off of transistor A. And same thing, before turning on transistor A we have a dead time after turning off transistor B. Okay, So this is the dead time that we need to implement. This is the time diagram of how we are going to do this. We have here the PWM signal that we have at the input of our driver. From this signal, paying attention here in the edges of these signals, what we are going to do is to generate this clock with these two pulses. One of the pulses is going to be generated uh, from the positive edge of the PWN signal and the other pulse from the negative edge of the PWN signal. Also, these pulses are, are going to have a duration and time duration equal to the dead time that we want to implement. And we are going to generate these uh, pulses very easily using a one-shot flip-flop. Now, from these uh, shots, from these uh, pulses here, we are going to generate a signal A. The signal A is generated from the positive edges of this um, uh, signal, of CLK signal. Okay, so in this positive edge, we are going to uh, turn on the signal A. And then in the next one, we are going to turn off the signal set the signal to zero, okay? And we are going to generate this signal very easily by using a toggle flip-flop. A toggle flip-flop that is going to be activated with the positive edges of this signal. Same thing with, uh, or similar thing with this signal B. We are going to generate this signal from the negative edges of the CLK signal. Okay, so in these negative edges, we are going to toggle signal B, starting from 0, then 1, and then 0 again, and so on. Okay. So now it is very easy to generate the final signals that, it, that we want. For the top transistor, we are going to uh, generate this signal, the AND operation between A and B, A times B. 
okay and then we will generate this signal here in green and also for the button transistor to drive the button transistor what we are going to do is this operation the nor operation a plus b not okay so we are going to generate this other signal which is the signal that we want so between these two signals at the end we are going to have a dead time that is equal to the duration of these pulses here okay same thing in this other interval here okay so here we have our dead time that we can control by controlling the duration of these pulses here we can see the implementation of the circuit. We can see here the PWM input. The signal is sent to the one-shot flip-flops. In this part here, we have a one-shot flip-flops, which is activated by the positive edges here of the PWM input. And then it is going to generate a pulse at the output P1 with a duration which depends on the time constant of this circuit. So we have the possibility of having a programmable time constant by using this parameter tau here, which is given in nanoseconds. Then at the bottom here, we have the other one-shot flip-flops. In this case, this one is activated by the negative edges of the PWM input. And then it is going to generate a pulse also with the same duration. Both pulses are added using this OR gate. So we have here our CLK signal with the pulses. These pulses are then sent to two toggle flip-flops, as we can see here, A4 and A5 are toggle flip-flops that are going to generate the signals A and B, respectively. Finally, these two signals are processed by these uh, two gates, and in this way we can generate the product AB and the NOR function of A and B. Okay, so we have here our final signals. Finally, we have the initialization circuit. In this part, we need to initialize both toggle flip-flops at the beginning. And for this, we are using this pulse here with a duration of five times the tau constant in such a way that uh, we are using the PWN signal to do this initialization because we have to take into account the, the following. If the initial PWM, if the PWN signal at the beginning is equal to 1, then we are going to initialize the signals AB to the value 1. But if we are in this uh, situation, if the PWM signal at the beginning is equal to zero, then we need to initialize both signals A and B to the value zero. Okay? So this is what we are doing with this circuit here and also with this inverter. We are just uh, clearing or setting the uh, flip-flops uh, initially in order to have the correct values for A and B. Let's illustrate the operation by doing a quick uh, simulation of the circuit. We have here our circuit, so let's run the simulation and see some of the waveforms. We can see here the PWM input that we are injecting is a 100 kilohertz waveform with an on time of 3 microse microseconds and an off time of 7 microseconds. So we can add another pane and see, for example, the output here, P1, which corresponds to the pulses that are being generated at each positive edge of the PWM signal. Similar with P2, which are the pulses generated at the negative edges of the PWM signal. Both pulses are added together here 
at this gate so we can see the CLK signal here and if we add another pane we can show the signals A and B which are the signals generated from the pulses and by processing these two signals finally we can get the outputs A and B. You can see this better. If we uh, change here the axis and then we can see how the signal A is 1 in this interval when the PWN signal is equal to 1 and the signal B is 1 when the uh, PWN signal is 0. We can also measure the value of the dead time by using the cursors and then we obtain that the dead time, the dead time is something like 270 nanoseconds. So roughly we can say, because this value is obtained for a value of the tau constant 100 nanoseconds, we can say roughly that the dead time is going to be something like three times the value of this parameter tau. So this is the final implementation of our circuit. We have added these voltage controlled voltage sources in order to have the outputs isolated. We use also this parameter here, VCC, in order to have an adjustable and driving voltage because the output here at A and B we have here signals that go from 0 to 1 so we are multiplying these signals by VCC so with this parameter VCC we can adjust the peak voltage of the signal that we are going to use to drive our switches and finally we have included the shutdown circuit here, so with the shutdown input, we send these signals to these um, gates. So when the shutdown is equal to 1, then both gates are going to generate 0 and the outputs, and then both transistors are going to be deactivated. From this schematic, we can now create both items that we need for our new component, the symbol that we can see here for our component. We can see that we have two parameters here, VCC and tau, in order to adjust the gate voltage and also the dead time of our driver. And also from the schematics, we need to uh, create the uh, file containing the spice description of our circuit. So we can see in this part, this uh, file. If you are not sure about how to do this process, we have seen this uh, methodology in previous videos. So I recommend you to see also these two videos. LT spice number three, create how to create new components, and LT spice number four, how to create new components from schematics. As usual, if you want to save time, you can visit my web page here. You have the, the link, and in the part corresponding to resources, you have here this new component, my driver for half bridge inverters. Finally, let's do a couple of simulations to test our new component. Here we have a quick test in which we are injecting a pulse, a PWN signal of 100 kHz and 3 microseconds of on time. And then we are injecting here also a pulse in order to test the shutdown input. So let's run the simulation. So we can see at the top the PWM signal. Let's change here the scale to see this better. So this is the PWM signal and at the bottom we have the outputs A and B. We can see the dead times and also we have the interval in which the, uh, the, the outputs are deactivated because of the shutdown signal. We can show 
maybe here the shutdown signal again if we change the scale we can see this better so the shutdown signal is activated in this period and then and the output is off we can also see this better doing a zoom so we can see how the output a is at one in this period but also including the, the time and also the output b is equal to one when the pita variance signal is equal to zero and this is a second test in which we are simulating a PWM inverter. We want to generate at the output a sinusoidal waveform of 50 Hertz. So we have the sinusoidal reference here with this amplitude and 50 Hertz. And the sinusoidal reference is compared in the comparator with a triangular waveform with a switching frequency fs that we have selected equal to 20 kilohertz this signal is injected in our driver and then in the hard bridge inverter and then filtered with this lc filter and uh, in this way we will generate the sinusoidal waveform at the output so let's run the simulation we have also included here these statements in order to calculate the input power, the output power, and also the efficiency of our inverter. So let's see now the results. We can show, for example, the sinusoidal waveform here, which is our reference, and also the triangular waveform to do the uh, comparison. So now we can add another pane let's put this at the top and then show here for example the square waveform that we are generating at the output so we have here the mid and so now we can do a zoom to see this better we can see how at this point when the sinusoidal waveform is at the maximum value the output voltage is uh, has a on time higher or longer than the off time so the average value is positive if we check this area here when the sinusoidal voltage is close to zero then we can see that the duty cycle is almost 0.5 so the average voltage is zero and then when the sinusoidal voltage is at the minimum then we can see that the average voltage at the output is negative we can also show the output voltage here between these two points and then we can see that the output is a sinusoidal waveform with a, a small ripple superposed and finally we can evaluate the input power the output power and the efficiency using this statement here if we press now control l we can see the results so here we can see that the output power is 142 watts the input power is 152 and the efficiency is 93.3 percent we can also check the gate signals if we like we can delete this waveform here and show at this point the gate signals in this transistor and at the bottom also so we can check if they are operating correctly by checking the dead time so we can see that there are not intervals in which both the transistors are activated simultaneously so everything is working pretty well so this is all in this presentation today thank you very much for watching please let me know if you have any comment or question and see you in the next video goodbye now